Welcome everybody. Good morning. We are in Spain, so good morning. Um, we're going to have a panel discussion today on a topic that I think is very relevant on e-commerce logistics and the international cross-border uh, customer experience. Why is this relevant? Um, we hear pretty often that e-commerce merchants, uh, when they expand internationally, we hear that they struggle to, to provide a good customer experience abroad. And often uh, e-commerce logistics is partly or, or part of the reason there. So today, um, the goal is to get to the core of the challenges around uh, the customer experience in cross-border e-commerce. And hopefully, we can have as takeaways, uh, knowledge on how to remove logistical customer frictions internationally, how to delight your international customers, and how to avoid disappointing customer experiences in the UK. And as a side note, a bonus, let's say, how to sell successfully in the Netherlands, because everybody on stage here is Dutch today, so we can add some value there, I hope. My name is Ruud. Uh, I'll be the moderator today. I'm head of marketing at Sales Supply. Uh, Sales Supply enables cross-border e-commerce. We do so by providing customer service in 36 languages and e-fulfillment. And e-fulfillment we do through our own e-fulfillment platform. At the moment, we have about 20 warehouses connected. Uh, also the warehouses of uh, one of the panelists of Active Ends. The advantage for our customers here is that um, if you go cross-border, you often need a multi-warehouse strategy. To our warehouse, you don't have to deal with several points of contact, several way of working. All is uniform. You have one point of contact, one invoice, one way of working. And that's it about me and about sales supply. Let's go to our panel because on, st on paper, we only had two out of three uh, present here. But luckily, we were able to add a merchant as well. Kuhn, thank you. Um, and by doing so, we have the entire post-purchase journey here. So that's good. We can highlight every part of the customer experience related to logistical e-commerce. Around midnight last night, they asked me to do the introduction for them. Uh, so it's going to be a very short one. Um, Kuhn, next to me. Hmm? We were going to make it a bit longer. Uh, there you go. Hi there, I'm uh, Koen Hogenbaum, uh, working for Mr. Marvis as a supply chain director. Uh, basically responsible from production planning to uh, delivery and, uh, and returns. Mr. Marvis is a um, fashion brand, slow fashion brand, uh, known for its uh, shorts, trousers in, uh, and tops. Good afternoon, Martin Terrile, working for PostNL, the postal operator in the Netherlands. Uh, we are uh, also uh, well known and present uh, outside the Netherlands uh, with our brand Spring Global Delivery Solutions. So when you need some cross-border solutions or uh, all kind of uh, inspiration, please contact my colleagues over there because they are very good in, in helping you with cross-border e-commerce. But I'm the, from the postal operator in the Netherlands. Dennis Raadschelders, Business Development Manager at Activance. We do uh, e-commerce fulfillment, uh, B2C, uh, via automated systems. And we are located with two sites in the Netherlands, one in Belgium, one in Germany, and one in the UK. So, yeah, so we have an uh, e-commerce merchant, we have fulfillment cross-border, and we have a local delivery and last mile, uh, local hero last mile delivery with PostNL. Um, so let's see what you think of the, of the following statements, uh, guys. You can't beat local competitors on customer experience. Who wants to start, Who wants to start on that one? I'll give it a try, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> um, yeah, to, to some extent, it's obviously true. Um, uh, meaning uh, we as a Dutch brand uh, cannot always fulfill uh, the customer delivery speed that they would, they would uh, basically require in their market. Uh, take, for example, Spain. Um, if we ship from our uh, Dutch warehouse, it takes quite a long time uh, to get here, unfortunately, still. Uh, Activance is obviously working hard on the solution there. Um, uh, we can provide express shipments, um, uh, so that's obviously a, an option, but in terms of speed, it's, it's a bit hard. Uh, on the other hand, um, you, you can beat those uh, local competitors, um, because it's not only about speed, it's also about quality and the product, uh, what they expect. Um, and as long as you communicate proactively about your promises 
and you are able to fulfill those promises, I think the customer accepts that you're not a local player and that you are able to provide the service that they are expecting. Um, so I think that's a, that's a very important aspect. Um, and then, of course, after sales, uh, you can be better at the local competitor in terms of that if you have that local knowledge and, um, and language uh, as well in your customer service. So I think that's another aspect. I think uh, with many customers, we see the same. Uh, it's all about the experience, uh, managing the correct uh, expectations. Um, and if, if you can personalize the process a bit more than the, than the local uh, um, companies, then you can still get some customers, I think. Yeah, and in the end, it, of course, it is important that you have to, to, to do what you promise on, on your site. If you have a delivery uh, option for, let's say, two to five days, you have to do that in the end and not to do it in, in 10 days, for example. So you can be the, the, local, uh, the local hero or the, the local online uh, shop, but you have to do uh, a special uh, uh, the things uh, who are uh, normal in that country. So uh, when you are uh, acting in the Netherlands or in Belgium, uh, it, it looks like uh, the same country. They are mainly talking the same language, but in the end, there are a lot of differences in between. So uh, you, you have to do uh, what's local, necessary, and uh, everybody is doing, and, and you have to do it, and, and you have actually uh, have your own country manager or something like that who is very familiar in, in, a, in a certain country to do the business. I think uh, maybe additional to that, I think you can also think of uh, loyalty programs or and at least work with uh, the final uh, carriers, uh, final mail carriers. Uh, but I think that can also help. And uh, yeah, be aware that you have the good return solutions. And it's clear to them that it's easy and hassle free. Okay, thank you. So to sum it up, you might not win on all points, but as long as you act local, do what you say, and be transparent about it, uh, you can definitely compete. I think so. Well, then the next one Brexit logistics and a good post customer experience that's mission impossible who wants uh i'll start again um <laughs> uh, i guess no not on this topic uh customer experience yeah in the beginning uh brexit was all new uh, and it was a challenge for everyone so i, I think customers uh, did accept delays at first but at a certain point in time you have to take care of your business. Uh, I wanted to say something else. Um, uh, so then it's just a matter of hygiene. So if you, you should be able to deliver that, that service and, and, and the delivery to, to the UK, um, and you cannot outperform your competitors on that, you just simply need to deliver. That's my point of view. Yeah, and besides that, I think uh, it's very important if, if you want to compete from uh, another country into the UK, it's quite difficult because you have more uh, higher shipping costs, you have uh, VAT duties, etc. But you can also choose for a fulfillment partner locally, and then you can still uh, then it's it's, it's quite easier, um, like we did for Mr. Marvis as well. You put your stock locally in the UK, uh, and I think it, it it helps a lot because it's yeah your your products are quicker at the customer. Um, you already cleared all the goods, so yeah, so it's a domestic shipment, and it's also on your shipping cost. It's make a, a lot of uh, a big difference. Yeah, and uh, as PostNL and as well as, as Spring are uh, very familiar with this topic and do have their specialists uh, within our company to advise all the, 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 the online shops from the Netherlands, but also for, from the other countries in, in Europe to, to do the business in, 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 the, in the UK. But you need that expertise to help uh, your, your, your customers uh, to do business in, in the UK. And, and so can you tell us a bit on, on how it was uh, for Mr. Marvis? So you, at some point, you decided uh, together with Active Ants to, to place your products there, to store them there. Did you see any difference in, in, in well, in results, basically, afterwards, wh whatever they are? Yeah, definitely. Uh, of course, we were able to win on speed, uh, mostly, um, uh, in terms of customs and documentations, uh, even though it's only two, it's already two years now, two years, Brexit? years um uh it's still an, it's still quite a hassle to import your goods there uh of course once you know the, the specialist and you have the right parties uh who are servicing you that that's of course very important uh but 
what we saw when we were locally present, uh, we were able actually to invest more also in, in marketing. Uh, we were telling our story a bit broad, more broad in there. Um, and yeah, of course, it helps that you get this this faster delivery than, than what they're still used to, that, that European uh, companies who import in the UK, it takes a bit longer uh, to deliver at their doorstep. And, and right now we are able to actually deliver a bit faster. So that's, uh, that's definitely a plus. So it, is it still expected? Uh, sorry, is it still accepted in that way that that European companies take longer? Um, well, I well th that depends if how how open you are on that communication part. Uh, again, and also what uh, uh, Martin said. Um, yeah, it depends on your communication on your website. So if you if you mention a delivery lead time of three to four working days, uh, and you're able to provide that with a Brexit import, then that's still fine. Uh, it's it's all what you promise to what your customers, and if there is a um, uh, a delay, uh, whatever happens, something if something goes wrong, then at least you proactively communicate about that. So yeah, again, do what you say, be transparent, communicate about it. Yeah, and, and specific, right specifically upfront. Uh, so yeah. uh, be be proactive in your communication about that because it's so annoying if you expect a package on day X and it's not there yet, and there's no communication from the company that you buy from. Uh, you have to be, you have to be up, yeah. Uh, uh, before exactly. the, ex the before they know the delay, you have to already inform that and, and about it. Good, thank you, thank you. So returns, it's mentioned briefly before. Um, national, international, for the customer, it's all the same. Yeah, do I have to start? Ah, I think it's uh, it's it's for the customer doesn't matter where you're located. If they want to return, they want to return it uh, easily and hassle-free. Um, so I think it, it's all the same. But in the back end, then you have a lot of differences, of course, if you're shipping overseas. Um, and also the processing of the returns can take up longer because the, the transit time is, is longer to get it in. Um, but yeah, does the customers want the same? I think so. Uh, and I think you can make it easier by if you, if you visit the website of Mr. Marvis, they also do with a return an exchange. So if you have a lot of returns and you want a uh, you want a better um, experience for the customers, they have an exchange button. So they automatically can order a new one and uh, and swap it. Uh, and I think that can help on returns as well. It's a, it's a great solution to see. Yeah, returns in the end uh, are very, very important in the, in the whole customer journey. And uh, I have uh, my wife is an active uh, online shopper, and the first thing uh, she's looking for is uh, if the is the return for free. And uh, when not, she go to another site. So uh, into the returns is a very important solution. And if it is national or international, it's not not important in the end. Uh, uh, when you are sending parcels into the Netherlands via PostNL, you, you need a domestic uh, return solution. And we can offer that, of course, as well as, as Spring can do that in every country where they are active. But, but you need a good return solution. And uh, you see more and more the discussion coming up. Uh, we ask uh, a little uh, surcharge for a return. Uh, I see some customers uh, starting with uh, 99 cents, for example. Uh, some others say no, it's always for free, uh, but, but yeah, it, it, it's a difficult discussion. But in the end, you have to offer something and, and it, it must fit in, in your, uh, in your uh, customer journey and what you are saying to your customer. So yeah, it, it's an important topic and for me it's not important uh, or not uh, necessary uh, national or international, but you have to, good, you have to offer a good solution. Yeah, to add on that, uh, we are in a maturity phase that we are only uh, available online and only a couple of physical stores uh, in uh, in the Netherlands, Belgium and, and Germany. So the customers don't have an option to fit our products in uh, into a store. So we have to at least give them that return option for now. Uh, as Martin said, so a small fee, yeah, you do want to make your customers aware how they order and their behavior on ordering. Um, because you all know the examples of so, uh, buying uh, buying every shorts in two sizes or even three sizes to to see if the, if it's a perfect fit. I even uh, I can even see examples of buying the same shorts in the same size double to make sure that the fit is perfect. Um, and uh, yeah, that's that's still normal behavior from our customers. Um, so I is there a difference between this customer and the other? definitely definitely 
um, yeah, uh, I don't want to put people in, in corners, of course, but uh, there's definitely a, a different behavior per market. And uh, for example, uh, Belgium, uh, they are very loyal and they, they are very aware of uh, how, how they order. Um, lower return rates and uh, Germany, uh, I think due to the history uh, of uh, some marketplaces there, uh, they, yeah, we, we see completely different return rates. So you have to be aware of that. And are you, uh, are you experimenting already with paid returns or? Yeah, we, we do that. We do do that, but it's not necessarily to make them aware yet. Uh, but we, we do have, since we provide global shipments, uh, for example, to the US, and we all do this from, from the Netherlands. You can imagine that shipment costs are quite uh, extensive. Uh, it's quite expensive. Um, so it's also a bit about covering your costs, of course. Uh, so uh, yeah, they're, they're all on our website, so you can check them out. <laughs> but yeah, they, we, do, we do charge them for some uh, regions. For European regions, it's, all, it's basically free. Has that been uh, the paid returns? Has that been since the beginning? Or is that something that you're now attempting? And do you see differences in, in, in how it's working? No, I think, no, we, we started off like this. So, um, uh, yeah, we obviously, we, we, we go to markets uh, more aggressively uh, and then you have to think about your return protocol uh, and to make sure that the pricing is correct. Uh, but we, we don't see any difference now. Okay, okay. So national or international is not, not really the issue here. Uh, free or paid may, might be, but as long as you're upfront about it again. Um, I, get a... I think it's very important to to uh, mention it uh, up front because I think your conversion can be higher if you if, if the return solution is uh, is clear before ordering so I think it can also help your conversion to have a good uh, return solution now so as a as a bit of a bonus um, I mean since, since it's an old Dutch panel uh, do we have some tips for Spanish merchants uh, Spanish merchants who want to enter the the Netherlands what should they definitely do? What should they not do? Uh, what is important here? Yeah, looking at uh, uh, Spain, uh, looking and then especially to uh, to the Netherlands, we have uh, some uh, customers already present uh, in in the Netherlands doing a good job. The biggest one is uh, known by, every, by everybody that's Inditex, with all the brands they have are very very popular in the Netherlands. Millions of parcels both forward and returns, but, but has some, some uh, other customers like uh, Mango is, is very famous in the Netherlands with a lot of parcels and also uh, recently started to trade in as a customer in, in, in Spain and doing business uh, also in the Netherlands, but also other countries via our, uh, our partner uh, Spring. But, but uh, when you are present in the Netherlands, uh, yeah, the, uh, in, compared to, to Spain, we are not an, Am an Amazon country. In, in the Netherlands, uh, all the local uh, online shops are very popular. So uh, you can do great business in the Netherlands when you choose uh, the, the good partners for that. But the, the, the market is really uh, ready for, for customers or online shops from Spain because there are a lot of good, uh, good examples who do a good, good business in the Netherlands. Yeah, to add on that, um, I think it's also important to, to know that the Netherlands is a uh, small country. So if you order something in the Netherlands, you will nine, nine out of 10 times you have it the next day. So if you want to compete from Spain and you have a transit time of five, six days sometimes, yeah, the conversion will be lower because a Dutch guy will order the one they receive the next day or within two days. So that's something to, to take away. Uh, also do your market research because it's different. Uh, 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 yeah, do, do a bit of localization. So um, yeah, do market research about the country and the habits. Uh, that sort of things is... Uh, quite uh, important I think yeah uh, not much to add uh, one minor detail maybe we as Dutch people are quite we expect the service um, and uh, we are uh, we're keen on that and and, and uh, how many calls that we that we get for example as mr. Marvis on our products uh, uh, crazy <laughs> crazy questions so you have to be aware of that customer service part of as well I guess yeah so you'll need a language uh, fast delivery is an important one and, and what kind of advice did your colleague give, uh, give to Mango, uh, Martin? Yeah, I think uh, the, the, the most important thing, uh, you say that the language is important, but uh, even uh, uh, sites in, in the German language or the, the English language is not a problem for, for the Dutch customer in the end. But uh, what, what, we, what we promise them is, is uh, the fast delivery, of course, is, is, is very important and a good return solution we offer them as well. 
So uh, they are bringing uh, uh, on a daily basis the parcels into the Netherlands, and and when it is uh, within the the process of post mill, it always delivered the next day. So a very fast solution we can offer. The only thing is, of course, uh, the line hold takes some days or maybe one day, but in the end, you can offer a 48-hour service uh, to the customer in the Netherlands. And uh, what you said, uh, or what you said, uh, the next day delivery is is normal in in the Netherlands. But you see more and more also uh, why tomorrow if it also is possible to do it in the end of the week or two days later or three days later. So that's, a, that, that's, a, uh, yeah, that, that's what you see more and more in the Netherlands as well. So not necessary every next day uh, instead of it's, it's regular or normal at the moment. But uh, what, what I said before, you have to do what you promise. And when you say, okay, I will deliver it in three days, you have to do that in the end. And you can also uh, discuss that with, with your customers abroad. Because uh, what I said, you have the line hole, and that's always a challenge uh, to be at time in, in our process. Thank you. There are a couple of additional questions. Uh, Martin, this one's for you. Uh, if anybody else wants to, to add something, please go ahead, of course. Eh? Sustainable, mentioned briefly before, it is sustainable delivery is growing. Uh, can we see it becoming the main option, and what would need to happen? Um, from from a post NL point of view, what are what are you doing uh, in this field? Yeah, for for not only for post NL but, but for the whole uh, company, uh, we are uh, we are uh, branded eh, like like Spring as well. Uh, sustainability is 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 really key, and and uh, we are doing a, a lot on on that topic. Uh, always uh, different difficult is uh, how to how to say that in in the market. Eh? We are. Uh, maybe in the end uh, too too shy to to say everything we are doing uh, on on that topic because uh, we are a stock listed company and you uh, greenwashing is always uh, looking at you so you have to be careful what you what you are saying in the, in the, in the market and in in your exposure but yeah uh, uh, sustainability is is really key and we are doing a lot of things on that on that topic and we are also uh, High listed in in a lot of indexes uh, as as uh, one of the of the the the, uh, the only postal operator who's doing that that job on a on a good level. So yeah, it's it's very important for for us as a as a company because our customers uh, uh, wants to have or uh, needs that that we are doing that. So it's not only for us but also for our customers we are working with. Okay, thank you. I'm not sure, but I've I've added uh, the image you sent me. I'm not sure if you want to add something on uh, on that. If not, it's fine. Right. Of course. I th I think you can't read it. In in, <laughs> if I can, uh, then. Uh, but I uh, when when you are uh, want to uh, to know something more. But this this is what we are working uh, with on a daily basis. And and uh, yeah, we have a great team who is uh, doing the, that job and and working together with with customers. Uh, we have uh, a partnership with uh, bol.com uh, that's that's the amazon in the, in the netherlands for reusable packaging for example we are doing uh, webinars with that so yeah in the end it's it's really important i think uh, what the most important is is that if you if you do uh, research a customer don't want to pay for it so i think uh, sustainability should be in the company dna i think every company has to do their best to uh, to do on short term uh, all all, everything they can do and for long term make a good plan how you can be more sustainable because yeah why should ev anybody has to pay for it it should be the standard because we yeah do it the best way you can with the, the less impact you can do i recognize when i'm in discussing rates with with customers and i ask for uh, something extra for uh, for a sustainability delivery no way so it's it's for free and uh, correct what you say it must be in your dna I noticed, uh, Gun, that in the previous presentation it showed that you're a B Corp uh, with Mr. Marvis. Is this one of the topics that you're constantly looking at then as well? Yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, uh, it's it's in our DNA and we're quite proud of that. Even uh, So uh, we are a fashion brand, a slow fashion brand. Uh, so we, we are aware in which industry we are active. Uh, and in, indeed, we are B Corp certified. And, um, and right from the beginning, right from the start at our foundation, this has been a major uh, a major topic. Um, so we are pushing uh, our fulfillment partner, Active Fans, uh, almost on a daily basis to provide this op these opportunities. Um, and I think customers, so the end customers, 
are willing to pay if you are able to provide insights in, in what you do on that sustainability delivery option. Um, so the options need to be there on the table. And I, I only need to see now the niche players, of course, uh, Martin is, uh, is doing a, a lot of work on, uh, on PostNL, but there are niche players out there who are discovering that fields now. And I think the big players need to, uh, need to step up and, uh, and make sure that they're uh, still, still on the lead on that aspect. Then uh, we talked a little bit about it earlier, Dennis. Um, if you've seen uh, anybody who's seen an active ants fulfillment center, it's quite spectacular what's driving around there in terms of robots. Um, yeah, you have a lot automated right now. Uh, the robots, I, I heard before, there's more than that. Can you, can you tell us a bit about how, is it, how it is right now and, and, and what you're looking towards the future? What you're looking yeah. towards that? Uh, at this moment, uh, we have an almost a fully automated process in which uh, we create, we set up the boxes for all the orders. So every product what's coming into our warehouse, we measure, uh, we weigh them and put them in the auto store. Auto store is vertical uh, warehousing uh, with bins, and the bins is 60 by 40 by 33. Uh, and if the if the products can fit in the bin, then we can use it in our process. So it's quite a specific process. And what we do if an order is coming in, we know exactly which kind of box we have to use. We have three types of boxes. Um, the product will be sent to a picking station. The box will go on a robot to the picking station. And a robot is bringing the bin to a picking station. One of our, our employees will put the, the product in the box. And then the box will automatically go to a packaging street where we can apply a full color print on the box and then uh, the robot also brings it to the correct carrier lane. So it's quite an um, automated process uh, which uh, can be de yeah, developed even more because of uh, AI, um, multi-channel uh, IT is getting more and more. So I think there will be uh, extra steps in the future. But uh, the, the main reason for us is what it make successful is it's more and more difficult to get employees. I don't know how it is in the Spanish market, but in the Netherlands market, uh, in the Netherlands it's quite difficult to get employees. And in this process, it, it helps us a lot to, to keep us pro uh, our process running. So I think many companies will um, develop in, uh, in robotics more and more. But you also need to have some investors or money to spend because the, the, yeah, the, the investment you have to do is quite high. And uh, yeah, it's quite difficult in the beginning as well. Uh, what we now have is a is kind of plug and play uh, setup, which we have in uh, two sites in the Netherlands, one in Belgium, one in Germany, and one in the UK. And we want to expand to France, Spain, Italy, etc. Um, and all with the same uh, IT environment. Yeah, I would love to share, uh, show the video right now, but it wasn't working with the Wi-Fi earlier. So if you have a moment later, look it up. It's, it's, it's spectacular.